In this video, I'd like to look over some special families of graphs. And probably the most important family of graphs is known as the complete graph. So why is it a family? It's a family because you can define the complete graph for any value of n, where n is the number of vertices. So let me draw the first example of one of these, which would be something like this. It's a single vertex with no edges. And we actually have something to call this by. We call it k sub 1, which is the complete graph on one vertex. And then we can talk about the complete graph on two vertices, which looks like this. Two vertices, and they're joined up with an edge. That's called k2. And we can keep going. Let's take a look at three vertices. And we draw in all three edges that could happen, and that's going to be called k3. If we look at four vertices, and we want to figure out what is the complete graph on four vertices, we have to draw in every possible edge, like this, and across, and across. And that's called k4. So in general, a complete graph denoted k sub n on n vertices is a simple graph with an edge between every pair of vertices. So knowing this, let's see if we can draw k5. An interesting point is that the number of edges that the complete graph has, if it has n vertices, then it will have number of edges equal to n choose 2. Now another important type of graph, because it's kind of a trivial case, is called the empty graph. And the empty graph is basically the graph which has any number of vertices you like, but no edges. So here's an example. This is the empty graph on four vertices. And in general, it can have any number of vertices you like. So if you were to think about a graph as representing people with every vertex, and an edge goes between two people if they are friends, for example, then in a complete graph, we would know that everybody in that graph is friends, whereas in an empty graph, nobody in the graph is friends. Another extremely important category of graphs is the idea of a bipartite graph. And it is defined to be a graph whose vertex set can be partitioned into two sets, I'll call them v1 and v2, such that every edge u, v in the edge set has one vertex u in one of the partite sets v1 and the other vertex v in the other partite set v2. So let's think of an example. When I draw my example, I'm actually going to draw some of my vertices in red and some of my vertices in blue. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to really distinguish what I mean by which set. So here I have the set v1 of vertices and over here I have the set v2 of vertices. Now this means that if my graph is going to be bipartite, every single edge that exists in the graph has to go between the set v1 and the set v2. So I'm going to use green for my edges, and if I draw in this edge, that's totally fine. The graph is still bipartite. And I can draw in this edge, and that's totally fine, and I can draw in this one, and I can do as many of these types of edges as I like, but I could not put in this edge right here between two vertices in v2. That would be against the definition of a bipartite graph, and this would no longer be a good example. So I will undo that particular edge. And this is my example of a bipartite graph. Now if I was to continue and put in every possible bipartite edge that I could, at this point I've matched up every single red vertex to every single blue vertex. And then I would call this a complete bipartite graph, which has every possible edge between the two sets of vertices. And we even have a special notation for the complete bipartite graph. Since we're using the word complete again, we're going to use a k, like we did for the complete graph, but we're not putting in every single possible edge because remember, we're not putting anything in between the reds or anything in between the blues. We're just going from red to blue and vice versa, but never between things of the same color. So what we do is we have the wording k, n, m, where our first partite set, v1, has size n, and our second partite set, v2, has size m. So this little example is an example of k3, 2.
there's a special case of complete bipartite graphs, and that's when one of the partite sets has only one vertex. And it would look like this, only one vertex in one side, and then as many as you like in some other side. And I'll just draw in those edges. And this one we would know is denoted by K13. And if you have a complete bipartite graph where one of your partite sets has size one, then it has the special name star. And it kind of makes sense because you could really draw these green vertices as sort of surrounding the outside of this central yellow vertex. And it sort of does look like a star, especially if you increase this number here. With only three, it doesn't look too much like a star, but if you kept going, it would look more and more like a star. Or at least it would sort of represent our interpretation of a star because we know that stars are really spherical. Our next category of graphs to look at are paths and cycles. And what I'm going to do is first draw a path and draw a cycle and then define them for you. So here I've drawn a path and I've denoted it by P sub 4. And here I've drawn a cycle which I've denoted by C sub 6. Notice that the subscript tells you how many vertices are in the path or in the cycle. But in the cycle, there are the same number of edges as there are vertices, whereas in the path, here we have four vertices, but only three edges. And that's always true. There's always going to be one fewer edge than vertex in the path. So now let's define a path. A path, which we denote P sub n, is a graph whose vertices can be arranged in a sequence. So here I'm going to write them down as v1, v2, v3, all the way up to vn, such that the edge set of the graph is given as follows. The edge set E is equal to the set of all possible edges vi, vi plus 1, where i goes from 1 up until n minus 1. So if we label our little example with v1, v2, v3, v4, we can see that our edge set does indeed consist of the edge v1, v2, then v2, v3, and then v3, v4. So it satisfies exactly this definition, but we can imagine this as generalizing to n vertices. And a cycle, which we denote by C sub n, is a graph whose vertices can be arranged in a cyclic sequence, v1, v2, up to vn, such that the edge set is E equal to all of the possible edges vi, vi plus 1, as well as v1, vn. So it's very similar to a path, except that we loop around at the end to come back to where we started. So here we have v1, v2, v3, v4, v5, v6, and if we were to stop here and didn't include this last edge, then it would just be a path, but including this last edge makes it a cycle. So in general, we require for a cycle that n, the number of vertices, should be at least three. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense and you end up with something that we would call a multiple edge. And we're only worried about simple graphs at the moment. Also, in graph theory, you'll often hear people referring to the graph which is the triangle, and that's pretty clear that they're referring to this graph right here. Notice that what we've learned already is that the triangle is equal to the cycle, which has three vertices, and it's also the complete graph on three vertices because it's such a small case. So these are some of the most important classes of graphs in graph theory. In the next video, we'll take a look at what it means for a graph to be connected and also what it means for a graph to be regular. See you next time!